Good morning, good afternoon, good day, everyone. Welcome to the next episode in the GVU, the GEOS video update. Today is a special day. We have a special guest in our midst. Of course, my name is Curtis Edwards, and joined with me, as always, is our co-host, Ben Mayer. And today, we have with us Kenny Lowe. Kenny, can you say hello to everyone, please? Hi, thanks for having me on the GVU. It's been a long time coming. Uh, it has be been here. a long time coming, you know, and, and, you know, I know you're a busy individual. Thank you very much for joining us. Today, we're going to be talking about a pretty exciting announcement, not announcement, excuse me, a pretty exciting uh, general availability, the release of, a, of, of one of our products, one of our solutions within our Apex Cloud Platform family. Um, ben, if you remember, in one of our previous sessions, we talked about the announcements that were made at Dell Tech World. Do you remember, you remember that conversation? Yeah, sure. So, let me so, so can you can yeah, take what, it what, there. tell me again what we announced. Yeah, so at Dell Technologies World, we announced the Apex Cloud Platform portfolio. And as we discussed, there's different stacks available. So we have the, the stack for Microsoft Azure, for Red Hat OpenShift, and for VMware Vizier. And today we want to focus on the Microsoft Azure one. So maybe, Kenny, maybe you could give us a bit of an overview of what is available now for customers and why is it so exciting? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so the Apex Cloud Platform for Azure um, launching on, well, has just launched, in fact. So we have just come up with the Apex Cloud Platform for Azure. And uh, yeah, it's a really interesting continuation of work we've been doing for a number of years with Microsoft at this point. Because if we look back, we've been working with Microsoft on hybrid infrastructure since like 2014, 2015. Um, Microsoft's strategy for Azure has always included a hybrid element because, well, hang on. My, my uh, headset is out. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> technology uh, is not my friend today. Um, where was I? So <laughs> Microsoft strategy, always hybrid. Did we cover that? Yep. Microsoft was born in uh, the enterprise, not in the cloud. So unique amongst the hyperscale cloud providers, Microsoft was born in the enterprise and then grew out to the cloud. So that's always given them a view that there needs to be a hybrid element to what they do. So back in 2014, 2015, we launched the cloud platform system with Microsoft, which was their first foray into a hybrid Azure offering and ours as well. And we've continued to work with them ever since to bring out new, enhanced, better capabilities. And then in 2019, uh, Microsoft released a suite of tools called Azure Arc. And Azure Arc is a set of Azure management governance and services capabilities, which is really designed to rub a little Azure onto the multi-cloud. So I would put it, it's to take a little Azure value and bring it anywhere. And so the, uh, the deepest Azure Arc integration comes through Azure Stack HCI and the fastest, best way to deploy Azure Stack HCI and the best integrated way to deploy Azure Stack HCI is on the new Apex Cloud platform for Microsoft Azure. So it's really about bringing the best, most capable Azure Stack HCI environment on premises to spread that Azure value to where a customer needs it, not just within the four walls of a Microsoft data center. But we already have solutions for Azure Stack HCI. We do. We do. We're making them better. We're making um, them better. We are making them better. That's what we've always done. We started off almost a decade ago. I and mean, each year we bring out something new, something better, and up the value stakes there uh, every single time. Now you, you you went through a pretty pretty good timeline there of the partnership and the and, and the the working relationship we have with Microsoft. What is your background with with Microsoft? Um, I've been working with Microsoft Technologies for probably twenty plus years at this point. I started off on IT help desk and um, doing NT four and Exchange five five uh, administration work, and then I went into a whole bunch of Exchange migrations from five five to two thousand three two thousand three up. From there as well across banking and newspaper publishing and AAA video games, then into service providers. And it was when I was working at a service provider, I got into the Azure world. Um, and there I got into the Azure Stack world because we wanted to bring Azure into our data centers there as a service provider. So that's when I first started looking at Azure Stack. And at that point, I was looking at lots of articles about the Microsoft hybrid portfolio, and I was looking at uh, sessions and conferences and things like that. And I found myself disagreeing with an awful lot of things that I was hearing and seeing. So I started blogging myself and I started talking at conferences mm. myself and getting my opinions out there. Um, because if you're not hearing what you want to hear, why not go out and do it yourself? Um, through that, 
I got nominated to become a Microsoft MVP uh, for Microsoft Azure. Uh, that was seven years ago, so I've been a Microsoft MVP ever since. And then this year, for the first time, also nominated as a Microsoft Regional Director, which is awesome as well. Awesome. So, you know, you said you, you, you started talking about and giving your own opinions and, and your own thought processes because you weren't happy with what you were hearing. So with the with announcement, like with, the, with a general availability of a solution like Azure, um, ACP for Azure, Apex Cloud Platform for Azure, why should this be important for customers? Well, the first thing to ask is why do customers like using Azure? Because uh, that's where we start with this solution. It's why do customers like Azure? Because uh, every single ACP for Azure customer is an Azure customer, without exception. That is uh, one of the key tenets of this, is extending their Azure strategy on-premises. And customers like Azure because they get uh, really rapid time to value. They can deploy things really fast. They can have services that exist within Microsoft data centers there. They get speed and agility and uh, the ability to use services they can't otherwise get. And we want to bring that same sort of experience on premises. So accelerate the time to value, make sure that the day two lifecycle management and day two management capabilities are as seamless and easy as possible and try and replicate that Azure feel on premises. So you're not spending all of your time down in the guts wondering if I upgrade this driver, is it going to break my workload? Let us take care of all that like Microsoft does within the Azure cloud um, and go bring value to where your company cares about, which is the workloads, not the infrastructure. So through our whole lifetime with Microsoft over the last 10 years or so here, we've improved how we've gone about lifecycle management and uh, improving the value to customers there. And with the Apex Cloud Platform portfolio, we've taken it a step further because we've really taken really strong value IP that we've built for VxRail and just transplanted that into the Azure Stack HCI ecosystem for the first time. So the outcomes that have driven the success of VxRail are on lifecycle management deployment, uh, day two tooling operations there. That is transplanted into the Azure Stack HCI ecosystem now to make that as easy as possible for customers there now as well, which is pretty awesome. So right. some of those feature functionalities, sorry, Ben, go ahead. No, so, sorry, Kenny. So um, as I understand, all of those features that you just named, they don't really exist in the existing Azure Stack HCI offering. And you read so, my mind. <laughs> from what I understand currently as well, those features are like a, a unique set that, that also pushed us into a whole new category. Can you maybe talk about uh, what this category is and why we're the only when yeah. that So if you look at the Azure Stack HCI ecosystem, Microsoft, up until a few days ago, made two different ways for OEMs to be able to uh, to build and sell Azure Stack HCI solutions. So the first of those is what they call validated nodes, which is basically a ready node program. This is the easy on-ramp for an OEM to sell Azure Stack HCI solutions. So basically you have to validate that the Azure Stack HCI operating system will install on your hardware once and then commit to support that hardware for five years. So out of the 20 something OEMs selling Azure Stack HCI solutions, the vast majority are doing just that. One-time validation support the hardware for five years. That's the easy on-ramp. The next step up is what they call integrated systems. And the integrated system program is basically take Microsoft code, integrate it into your hardware at a cluster level, validate at a cluster level, then support at that uh, software defined infrastructure level. So not just the hardware, but at the full uh, Azure Stack HCI operating system level, ship with the OS pre-installed from factory. And then you need to bring a level of deployment automation and lifecycle management and in integrated support there. And um, so we've done that, but it's been its own thing, we'll say. It's not had the same uh, rigor and, uh, and uh, engineering effort that VxRail had alongside it at the same time. So if we can take all of that engineering effort that's gone into the most successful HCI product in the market, and bring it into Azure Stack HCI, that brings tremendous value. And so with that and a few other things, Microsoft have created a new category, which they've just announced called the, the Premier Solutions category. And that is a category that Dell inhabits on our own now. So this is the only OEM living inside that category at time of recording. Um, and that brings a bunch of new capabilities. One of those that I love is that we now have our Apex Cloud platform for Azure systems running in Microsoft Engineering. So when they're doing their uh, their build process and their updates for their uh, software updates, part of the CI/CD pipeline that that runs through is through our hardware as well. 
So they're validating their builds through our hardware so that at the point where they release a new software update, we will support it pretty much immediately. We guarantee it will appear within our Windows Admin Center uh, extension within four hours, but that's the, the longest. It's pretty much as soon as Microsoft releases an update, we'll support it, which I think is pretty incredible. That's pretty substantial right mm. there. You know, so even even, even from a feature set from the X-Rail, that's a, that's a substantial leap forward to be able to put it in the Windows Admin Center within four hours or so. Yeah, you just mentioned the, the Windows Admin Center. Um, so how can customers use those functionalities that they, they do offer, like the lifecycle management? How can they consume all of those features? Sure. Well, I said that we bring the, the equivalent of the VxRail HCI system software into the Apex Cloud Platform for Azure. We also rename it. It's now called the Apex Cloud Platform Foundation software that runs within a virtual machine within the Apex Cloud Platform for Azure. And then all of its capabilities are surfaced up into Windows Admin Center through a Windows Admin Center extension. So there isn't a new portal to learn, a new set of uh, functionality to learn. It's all surfaced into Windows Admin Center where customers are, are already managing their Azure Stack XCI systems. Easy and straightforward. Very fast to deploy, very fast to consume, very fast to upgrade. And yeah, if we, if we compare the deployment steps of the Apex Cloud Platform for Azure to a validated node deployment, we reckon it's about 88% fewer steps to deploy our system versus validated nodes. Uh, and that takes you from about two days to two hours for deployment. Awesome. Now, Kenny, um, any any additional points or tidbits that you'd like our viewers to, to walk away with? Yeah, I mean, the other really cool thing that we're doing is we are enabling uh, external storage for Azure Stack HCI for the first time as well. So Azure Stack HCI has always been a hyper-converged infrastructure. The clue is in the name, Azure Stack HCI. Right. <laughs> uh, but that means that if you want to scale the storage, you've also had to scale the compute as well, which isn't always the best thing. If you have a small compute requirement and large storage, hard to meet that within an Azure Stack HCI system. Um, there are also boundaries in terms of maximum capacity we can do. The biggest size of an Azure Stack HCI cluster is 16 nodes, but actually the sensible size, probably between six and eight nodes um, from our experience there. So if you want to have more storage that can fit in, then can fit in that sort of footprint, either from capacity or performance perspective, then that's been a challenge as well. Um, and then if you have multiple Azure Stack HCI clusters and you want to have a shared storage pool across those, again, not something we can do just now. So as part of our really close co-engineering relationship with Microsoft, we have worked to uh, enable the addition of Dell software defined storage alongside your Azure Stack HCI to do, well, all of those things. So to scale beyond the maximum capacity of Azure Stack HCI storage, to be able to scale the storage independently and to be able to present storage to multiple Azure Stack HCI clusters over time as well. Uh, so not designed to replace Storage Spaces Direct, designed to augment it and reach scenarios that it's never been able to achieve before. So that's a new thing that no one else can do as well. So aug augment, let's just be clear there, right? So the, the solution will still have Storage Spaces Direct as oh, part yeah. of the original deployment, et cetera. And then it can expand by adding Dell Software Defined Storage on the back end. Exactly. Awesome. Well, um, Ben, anything else for, for Kenny? Yeah, I guess, Kenny, before we close, I mean, we, uh, we, if people we, want we, to hold find on, out we, we can keep going. We can keep going here, right? <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll talk for, for, <laughs> for hours and hours and hours. Yeah, I will shut up about this. <laughs> but we need to, we need to keep it keep it concise and keep it short for our viewers, right? Our viewers, they, don't, they generally don't like extremely long videos. Mm -hmm. So we're going to keep it short. We have a lot more people that we can bring on board to, for additional conversations and interactions. So I'll let you hit hit him with one more question or one more point, Ben, and then we'll go ahead and wrap it up for our viewers. Yeah, sure. I guess that the main thing for people to find out more, where can they learn more about our new ACP for Azure offering? Yeah, well, we've just Kenny. a whole... <laughs> you can call me. You can get me at Kenny at Dell.com. So, call uh... me. Call Ben. Call, <laughs> yep. call any one of us. We're all here to help. Seriously, if you want to hit me up on X, if that's what it's called now, then at Kenny Lowe is all good there, or you can email me at kenny at dell.com. That is also all good. Um, but we've just released a whole bunch of new collateral on the Dell Info Hub site there. So lots of technical demos, lots of recorded videos there, huge amounts of valuable content there. You can also find the newest blogs from our team as well at just geos.2. Uh, so simple URL for you to go to to see our latest blogs as well. So a wealth of information out there. You can consume it through those things we've put out there on the internet already, like this video as well or come to us and we will answer any questions you have as well. 
Um, but we awesome, will definitely put awesome. this in the description of the video, yeah. Uh, as usual, everyone, thanks for joining. Uh, for our viewers that are out there, please like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get notified uh, when we post up new videos. Uh, if there's any conversation or, or comments, please feel free to put it in the comment section down below. If there's anything you want to hear in our next video or in our next video series, any additional conversations that you would like for us to partake in, please post a comment down below. We, we read those comments and we, we like to get, get all the information out to our viewers that we can. Everyone, again, Kenny, thank you very much for your time this morning. I know it's uh, midday over there for you. Thank you for joining us, Ben. It's nighttime for you just about. So thanks, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next GBU.